What's up guys, this is Heist, and today we're playing at Train Simulator Classic. And today I'm really, really excited because we've got a new offering from Smokebox. This has been a long time coming, and it is the new version of the Challenger. Smokebox has never made a Challenger before, but there has been a Challenger in Railworks for a, a long, long time. I think it was one of the first steam engines that they actually added. Um, but it does not look anything like this thing because this one is incredible. Uh, this is the first time I'm actually getting my hands on it and looking at it in game. And just, just looking at this is ridiculous. Smokebox has outdone himself. And fun fact, I'm actually joined by Smokebox and once again our friend Justin on call here. Smokebox doesn't have a microphone though, so we'll think of all sorts of naughty things for him to say. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, there's Justin. Hello, we are here. This is... Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> oh, it, it happens. Yeah, staring at this choo-choo, distracted by that. The texture work is... I, I'm just looking at the piston rod and I'm like, oh my god, that's what they actually look like. I've never seen the color gradient and then you can see where where lubrication is happening and what lives inside the cylinder part of the time and what doesn't. And that's just attention to detail that only Smokebox gets right. This is just, I've got a big dumb smile on my face right now. This is gorgeous. So uh, I know Justin, you've been beta testing this for quite some time now. And of course, Smokebox has been developing it for quite some time. What are some of the, the neat little details or neat little things we should be looking for right away? Well, there's some new additions. Uh, one of my new favorite things that I enjoy is the markers on the rear of the tender. That'll be very nice for light power and also for helper service on the mountain. Okay, how do we get the marker lights up? So to get the markers lights on the tender, you have to press M and they show up and they're dark. <laughs> All right. And then control M to light them. Well, that's cool. That's a neat touch. So um, I'm not familiar with Union Pacific role for marker lights, but traditionally on the railroad in this era, you would have a set of class lamps at the front, these lit guys up here, and then on the rear, you'd have a set of marker lamps. So if we were running light engine, as we are sitting right here, we would need both of those to legally be a train, at least from what I understand from uh, my railroad experience. Is, is that about right with the UP rulebook, Justin? Yeah, so um, when you're out on the main, yeah, having the markers lit, uh, you need to have that. And in yard service, in order to move around the yard, all you need lit is that top red light above the headlight on the tender. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's really cool. That is, that is a, another little neat piece of sim that you don't really get to, to see that often. Let's get in the cab and see what's going on in here. Oh, this is familiar. Very similar to the other Union Pacific Big Power, of course. Pretty similar. Uh, it doesn't merit the extra <laughs> extra water glasses that the big boy has, though. I guess a uh, slightly shorter boiler, but... Yeah, that kind of threw me through a loop. I was looking at bl blueprints and the maps and everything, and I was kind of blown away that there's only two side glasses. Yeah, you kind of would have thought, I mean, it's still a gigantic boiler. I mean, the Challenger, by no means is it a small locomotive. It's just not as big as the big boy, but I mean, it's still properly large. That is kind of surprising. Wow. The texturing in here is just, just beautiful, and that's like the biggest pain in the butt to get right, too. Yeah, I was blown away, like, especially, like, if you look really close at the valve handles and everything, it's just... Yeah, they're, they're, they're the proper amount of in-service and, and the, the way that they kind of grime up where you can't really get a paintbrush in to actually paint them. That's, that is just neat. And we keep popping the safety valve because we're sitting here and uh, not doing anything with our fire. Ready to go. And then, of course, my, my favorite thing of all time, uh, the, uh, the actual coal bed simulation with the stoker. Well, let's, uh, let's get this thing moving and I guess uh, start to take a look at it. Let's see, I'm not even sure where we're supposed to go. Uh, I guess we're going that way. Let's, uh, let's get her going in reverse here. So we'll bring the, the power reverse to the rear. Make sure that our cylinder cocks are open and the master. 
kick the independent break off. And uh, let's do the thing. That never gets old. <laughs> so there's also an alternate whistle, too. Is there really? Yeah, if you hit, uh, I think it's control shift space bar, changes it to a second whistle. Oh, yes. And if you hold it down, you get lots of messages. Whistle one and whistle <laughs> two. All right. What is, what's whistle two? Oh, well, that's fun. That is, we're flying down track super fast. That's fun. That is, I got it. That feels like the Challengers, or that feels like a recording from 3985, is it not? Eh, it sounds like it to me. But that'll help uh, a lot of people have various opinions on whistles, as you are well aware. <laughs> what do you mean, Justin? Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> And yes, I'm very sure. <laughs> Smokebox is commenting that uh, the whistle, the second whistle, was provided by someone named Fan Railer. So cheers to that. That's a that's a great recording. The other beta tester. Look at that. We got good little rod clank as we work it nice and lightly in reverse here. Gonna close the. Uh... Oh, yep. Close the cylinder cocks and we get violent exhaust right away. I love that. All right, I should, suppose I should go make sure that I'm not going to run through a switch or anything, because that's uh, that would be embarrassing. I'm too busy drooling over here. And let's see. And we've got some cute little dwarf signals. That's neat. God, this thing is just just beautiful. Uh, the, the new texturing really. Makes it, it pop. really stands out. The rivet work on the mud ring here, or the mud ring down here, and then the throat. That's cool. Are those, are there flexi caps in there too? Or what? what's going yeah, those, on with all that? Those are uh, flexi caps, I believe. Uh, okay, well, that's neat. I don't know, I don't have the boiler blueprint right in front of me. Well, how dare you not have it memorized? It's a lot of locomotive. You should be able to do that, you know? All right, so Evanston pulling westbound, so I guess we're gonna go, gotta load up, gotta coal load, and we gotta top it off, I guess. Large looking rivets are actually caps. Okay, confirmed. That yeah, that, makes, that makes sense. It doesn't make sense for the rivets to be there, yeah. But that's a, a different style of flexi cap than I'm used to seeing personally, but I'm not the world's most experienced steam person, so. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. I'm not an expert on everything. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep backing up or not. Yes, one more track over. So we'll work it against the brakes because we don't know what we're doing. They're on the safety circulators too. Yeah, these guys around here. That's that's a neat bit of thing, and I, I never really realized that. So those are the washouts for the circulators then, huh? Yes. Well, that's cool. We'll have to take a look at that when we... Uh, when we get to a, a stopped position where it is safe to. Just leave the independent and slow uh, application, watch the train roll back. Uh, and we've got a mysterious dispatcher that's throwing our switch for us. Beautiful. That's kind of Brakeman. He's invisible. Right, my favorite. Same with the invisible fireman in Train Sim World. <laughs> and watching the valve gear. That's... That's just, that is such a treat. It's just the, just the little things. And then seeing the mechanicals tick as we go with the uh, nice red painted handles for hand cranking if need be. That's just slick. That's just cool. So go via, oh, so we're going, so we're not stopping. We need to stop at Wasatch Depot. So I guess we'll just go. I don't know what our, what's our speed limit here. 25, all right, well, let's, Let's do it then, shall we? And I will say, this engine's simulation is very accurate. So when you have a heavy train on you, you really do have to pay attention to the back pressure gauge. Oh, cool. Well, I'm, I'm excited to try that out. Let's see. Wasatch Depot eastbound or westbound. Oh, so we're running light to get there. Well, that means we can go fast, right? That's been the, the recent obsession of the channel is, uh, uh, you know, I've gone stir, gone stir crazy trying to sell my house and get ready for the move. So uh, we're just going to run fast, apparently. We'll 
try not also, to. Also, you are fired. Well, you know. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> we, we noticed the same thing at the same time. Oh yeah, we don't have our headlight on, on the main. It's fine. It's fine. We're only doing 15 over the speed limit, but... God, you know, there is something really cool about the look of the Challenger having the crank and then the main connecting on the third axle in each engine set and not having a connecting rod going to another driver. I mean, it just seeing that on the rear of each engine kind of gives it a unique look and getting to see the rods spin around. I mean, it's it's kind of cool that way. It gives it a nice it, end. It, it must have been crazy to, you know, counterbalance all that. No kidding. Yeah, balancing the weight of this giant, I mean, everything in here, the rods, everything's big. I mean, they're huge engines, so yeah, must have been quite a challenge. Let's see. Oh, and Smokebox is commenting that it's the freight speed limit, even though you're running light engine, because, but like, later on we're going to be taking over a freight train. You can't change the service type in the middle of the scenario. It sounds about right. So Which like, also fits in with UP's rules, so light okay. engines are limited to 45 miles an hour, regardless, so... Well then, let's show Union Pacific. What do they know? Yeah, don't get me started. <laughs> A thing or two. Thing or two hundred, but yes. All right, there we go. Forty-six, just because we want to show the man. AI engineer enabled. How did I do that? There we go. Turn turn him off. Also, you may wish to. Uh kick over the brake valve to release. You know, it's fine. Automatic engineer saw we were going fast and said, ah! Freaked out. He did. Oh, that was cool. Who just ran past us? Was it another challenger? That is. No, it's a big boy. It's the 4000. Look at that. That's fun. A little bit of a detail difference. A little bit, yeah. Small amount comparison yeah so there's big boy and then the challenger I mean just look at the firebox well we can keep it somewhere vaguely around track speed I think Wow and the smoke box just the the graphite texture smoke box is smoke box looks very nice and he says not his big boy I was gonna say it didn't look like his PTC would be screaming at you right now. PTC would be very mad. Instead, I just have the career manager saying that I'm getting lots of negative points, which is fine. He who has the least points win. It's like golf, right? But negative helps. It's like every time I log in, I get a message from... Yeah, never mind. Just, <laughs> just looking at like the smoke box dogs for the access hatch for the, the front end throttle. Just right there, superheater header. Just uh, every little bit of detail modeled to that amount of care. I mean, that's just really cool. And the tech, yeah, the texturing is great. The little dabs of soot and and coal smoke that are on there. That's uh, this is still a very clean engine, of course, but that's really really good attention to detail. And we blew through that crossing without a whistle. It's fine. It's unimportant. 76. I saw 70 on there. So. Freight speeds, right? The Challenger was mixed use. It pulled passengers sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. Although, probably would have been painted Greyhound, presumably? Or, or how does that work? Well, okay. So, the Greyhound ones were painted for the Pacific Northwest up to... Uh like Portland, Seattle, you know, your neck of the woods. Oh, neat. And uh, after they were done with that, also, ugh, let me backtrack, they were converted for oil firing up there, too. That's when they were painted. And then once they came back into the regular service, they were painted back to black. However, they were still also used for passenger or freight. Oh, well, that's, that's a neat bit of history there. And I, I would scream the uh, the lyrics to that ACDC song because you, you said them, but if I get ap approximately anywhere near close, they will demonetize the video. So we'll just uh, we'll skip over that and say that we made the joke that I wanted to. I once had a, 
a video that I played. Uh, I played Highway to Hell on my acoustic guitar, and it flagged it, and ACDC took the cash. Wow. Yeah, on my acoustic. How did how did they even know? It's annoying. Got the headlight to light up the track. Control Shift H. Well, let's try that. Beam toggled on. Yes. Well, that's neat. And I'm now breaking the passenger speed limit. That's fine. And also accidentally pressing shift, which flings the camera around, apparently. I, I am curious where your boiler pressure is at. Somewhere. It's still there. There's still, there's still some. <laughs> the AI fireman is like, you know, he's trying to throw as much coal in there as he can. It's okay. What? You mean I, you mean I can't... Stay bolts. You mean I can't leave the uh, the bar like halfway forward with the throttle wide open at 70 miles an hour and retain boiler pressure? What are you, sane? The safety valve was getting annoying to listen to. We had to get rid of all the pressure. But we've, we're pretty much a slight uphill, so we could just coast here and just keep it going. It's people like you is the reason why we don't have safety valves that have levers on them. <laughs> Hang on, we need a little bit more tractive effort. We're more than tonnage. Hang off that thing. <laughs> oh, that's fun. So, Justin, I know you've you've spent a lot more time with this thing than me. What are um, what's your favorite thing you've noticed about it so far? You know, visually or simulation wise. E either one. I mean, obviously, we don't have a train yet, so sim wise may not be terribly exciting. But uh, what do you mean visually? Well, visually, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what angle you're at, it looks like you're looking at a photo. Everything is to the print, it's beautiful. It really is. And this engine's really fun to run, the simulation's pretty much spot on to the tonnage rating chart. And, uh, yeah, because recently we were found a tonnage rating chart that has the speed, the grade, and the tonnage. So you can try different trains, and it's usually within a half a mile an hour of what the chart says. That's properly cool. And I'm also now seeing the, the texture on the ding-ding. That's It's very nice and clean and polished. That, that's, that is what a nice shiny bell looks like. And the funny thing is, if you go into the cab, the stuff that you uh, see that's normally brass is buffed cast iron, as smoke boxes now commenting. That's... Because of wartime material restrictions. Huh. That is neat. Yeah, because these were built, I mean, World War Two, right? I mean, or right before? Yeah, right during 1943 to 44, I want to say. That's cool. Oh, so we were, we said we were going to look at it earlier, but these are the safety circulators that we we're talking about that run. Do they uh, do they run to the crown sheet, or do they only just go side sheet to side sheet? They go side sheet to side sheet to crown sheet. Okay, so there's a vertical piece that we can't see that goes right. up to the crown as well, but that connects both your side sheets to your crown, and then you can see on the outside, you can see the washouts, these plugs you could remove to then... Uh, rinse any scale or rod them out and remove any scale that may have built up in there. Let's go. Oh, we've got a yellow. Oh, should probably pay attention. We've got a yellow signal now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. Bring it down to 30. <laughs> I'm getting ready to be decertified. What, oh, sir? That, that happened a long time ago. Oh, well, you know, it's fine. They're not watching, are they? We've just got the independent and slow. Oh, my Jesus. Well, that's fine. That's why it was yellow. We were lined into the pocket, and we just threw the train on the off the uh, <laughs> off the rails if they had derailment physics built in. Well, that totally just kind of looked like Red Desert, Wyoming, circa 4005. I was gonna say 4005 flung on its side because of sheep. That's uh, that's about what just happened there, I think. All right, well, we can leave the uh, the independent and lap here pinch it back down to some semblance of track speed. <laughs> uh, too much fun. I'm excited to tie into this train and, and see what this thing can do. Do we have some semblance of boiler pressure again? No? 
That's getting there. What, what's MAWP on this thing? Uh, it is 280. 280, interesting. Ah, uh, yes, maybe we should put on the smoke wings. Auto fireman, turn on the blower. You have no pressure. <laughs> Auto fireman's mad at you. Auto fireman's very mad at me, but, you know, if, if I sucked, you know, all of the boiler pressure out, my engineer did that to me, I'd... I'd be mad too. And now I'm coming over to his seat trying to get the blower on. Anyways, yeah, wind wings. How do we turn on the uh, the elephant ears? So the elephant ears are turned on. Looks like you'll be stopping here shortly anyways. But mm -hmm. uh, inside the cab, okay. at the very below the firebox door. Oh, the, the mythical thing to hit yep. down here. Oh, yes. That's sharp. That is sharp looking. That's cool. And it's kind of funny, until, you know, I ran both of these engines, both the 4000 and this, with smoke lifters on, I can totally see why the 4000s didn't have it, because the front uh, running ports are more angled, and it really does block more of your view. Oh, interesting. Okay. Come on, Choo Choo. We left you in slow app. Stop, and then we got a couple into everything behind us here. All right. Come on, I've got it wide open. We don't have enough boiler pressure to slip anymore, though. <laughs> Back up onto the consist. Indeed, we're we're getting there. Pity if you slip violently, there are sparks. Well, if Auto Fireman Man, who's not there, Invisible Fireman, if he can uh, put some coal in the firebox, uh, maybe we'll get some more boiler pressure again. We almost have 200, so. A couple standpipes stand here, that's cool. M U T C D, correct? Grade crossing sign, that's very good. I'm just going to pretend I didn't even hear that. <laughs> well, uh, it's been a long time plan for me to talk about grade crossings and their treatments at some point, and the manual of uniform traffic control devices, MUTCD, uh, and that'll be, I'm sure, the world's most riveting video. But Yeah, can you explain why every time it rains heavy, our crossing gates don't go up? <laughs> because the uh, rail-to-earth resistance changes when the ground's wet and uh, it thinks that a train's on the approach I would assume but anyway yes uh, that's 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 a fun problem to occur uh, maybe we should put on some brakes camera get me over there please quick app there we go Ow. it's fine bang those F units deserve that beware there may be a signal stuck at red on the approach to echo okay well Let's go. See if we can get rid of the boiler pressure now. Oh, I've got it wide open and in the corner again. But now we've got a lot of train behind us, so. Throttles on the ceiling, gents. Let's highball. I got 220 pounds. It'll build quick. There we go. You can also slide if the rails are very slippery and give too much engine brake pressure. Well, that's. That is not a fun time. We don't like flat spots on drive wheels because uh, truing wheels on steam locomotives sucks. So that, that means you have to take the wheels out and all the rods off, which is not a fun time. That kind of reminds me of a little story down in Texas. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? When, when, when the DD-40 said, hey, 844, I don't like you anymore. That was a, not a fun day, I'm sure. Sure it wasn't. All right, so we got almost back to, to MAWP. Good job, Invisible Man. We barely got any back pressure going. Um, we've got some train behind us here. I'm not sure how much train it is, and we're probably going way too fast through that turnout. But it's fine. Control-Shift-R. Here we go. 
Oh, look at all these details. The performance report. 0.4 of a mile. 2100 tons. Thankfully, they left the air charged up for us, which is nice. Coal bed unevenness is, like, perfect. What a ri ridiculously good fireman. He's probably mad at me for uh, everything I did. Now he's popping two safety valves. That's... that's Got that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was quite surprised when I was uh, testing out the manual firing. I had three safeties going. I was like, wait a minute. There's three safeties left. In that's awesome. I can't believe you actually simulated that smoke box. That's really cool. Two safeties popping open. This thing's got five safeties for one thing, which is kind of absurd and speaks to the boiler steam generation. But the fact that this, the auto fireman had two lifting when we were getting out with the train is awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, all five safeties work. Yeah, he said, Smokebox like he says said. emitters on all five, but he's never lifted more than three. Well, that is kind of the uh, the whole point is that Per regulations, you have to have more safeties than the boiler can generate steam, so you would have to have the perfect, really, really, really angry fire to lift all five. And I'm tired of the safeties and doing that, so I'm just going to use all the steam. There we go. Johnson bar in the corner, and there goes the pressure. Thank goodness. And how high is the back pressure? Yes. Needle go burr. Pistons go to the moon. Pistons go to the moon. Indeed, you don't need them anymore. It's fine. God, this thing just, is just a treat. Just remember, you are going to go downgrade. Oh, yeah, we're going a percent 1.1 downhill. You should probably do that. Probably a good idea. Unless we want to just absolutely fly with this thing. And speed limit's 25. Probably get it in first service. Sounds like a good idea. We, we, do we not? Oh, we don't have first service on this, do we? Oh, no, you do. You just have it turned off. Oh, I don't have it cut in. Well, I took a I took an eight pounder, so we'll, we'll just do that. Eight Sounds pounds right. and let it, let it do the thing. Yeah, it's, it seems to be slowing down. So you're going to like that. For services cut out by default, Smokebox says. Excellent. Auto engineer cuts it out. We don't need that stuff! Ugh. But I guess, uh, per what we talked about the last time we played, uh, we don't need first service. This train's not nearly long enough, really, is it? Right. That'd be 50 cars, which yeah, it looks like it's about 50. Yeah, we're kind of right on that spot. What, 2,100 feet? If you assume 50 footers. That's 42 and, a half. 42 and a half. Doing the math. Yeah, it's about 50. So we could be either or, but I guess uh, it makes sense to have it cut out. All right. Well, now we're like underneath the speed limit, so we're just going to kick the air off. I guess I had it left in first service, which I suppose when it's cut out, just acts like lap, presumably. You are correct. And we'll play this train accordion and get the throttle wide open again. It's fun how quickly that uh, we accelerated there. And the train is still releasing and immediately bogs us back down. It's fine. I promise that I've run more than 10 cars before. Wink. Oh, actually, I have. I promise that I've run more than 14 cars before. <laughs> oh, yeah, I keep forgetting about that. The uh, steam pipe cladding is going to take off. So let's go to the external view real quick. Okay. On the front set of engines from the exhaust pipe. I think it's the exhaust. Maybe the delivery. Yeah, it's the delivery pipe. Okay. Check out the, uh, you, you see that there's lagging around it? Yeah, this guy right here. So if you go back into the cab, and then that very first, the far right ash pan sprinkler. Far right ash pan sprinkler. Would you quit popping the safety valve, sir? That's very annoying. Where's the ash pan sprinkler? Uh, it's that row that's on the fireman's side. Okay. Oh, these on guys the down here? Yeah. Very right bottom. Okay. Oh, well, that's cool. Now we're, now we're uninsulated. Uh, 
and presumably these articulate properly as well, I would assume, with the engine as it does its yes. thing. Oops. Well, that's yep. that's just cool. That is that is something that I really like to uh, I'd really like to talk to in detail, do an articulated locomotive 101 episode at some point, and and get some see if I can't uh, talk my way into certain places and, and look at certain things. Perhaps that'd be a fun a fun episode. Up close and personal. Up close and personal. That'd be neat. I guess we should probably get some more air going before we bin it too hard here. Let's cut first service back in. Oh, hang on, I was in lap. I wasn't in first service. There we go. And we'll leave it in the uh, the Union Pacific proper 30-ish seconds, right? That's correct. And we're yeah, watching you run really reminds me. I really need to do a train handling video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've hey, been easy. playing this like an accordion so far. That would be another fun one to do. We'd be happy to have you on the channel for a, a Railroad 101 video. And Lord knows you're more of a railroader than me, so it'd probably be more appropriate. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. No comment on that. <laughs> Let's see. We've got some comments from Smokebox. When you modeled the delivery pipes, did them without lagging, then you realized that you had to do the lagging, keep the original parts rather than throw them away. That's cool. The yeah, unlagged parts actually helped hit the lagging correctly. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I mean, it's just like modeling or putting lagging on the real thing. You've got to uh, fit it to uh, stop it with the safety valve, dude. Quit it. I'm gonna use your steam again because you're annoying well, he, me. He doesn't know. He, he's a dumb fireman. He doesn't know what railroad steam. we're gonna go on. <laughs> and he doesn't he know what I'm gonna do. Steam. He keeps building steam. He he is doing the fireman thing of sitting in the seat and boiling water. Good for him. <laughs> he still has PTSD from when we killed the fire earlier. All well, right. I have PTSD. Well, it's 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 fine. You you have PTSD, P, not PTC. You have PTSD from that time that I watched your entire fire get thrown out the stack of the 346 for reasons. You remember that? Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> that was uh, that was probably the most volcanic bad slip I've ever seen. Stack hood! He screams. How do we turn it on? Tunnel ahead. Uh, uh, you, that's... Look ah! oh, well, you're fired. Oh, it's okay. And we've got the door so open. It, it looks like the uh, A1 straight air valve. Okay. It's that one that's like right Right, stop. It stop is. It. it is somewhere in the dark here. Yes, right there, very upper one. Oh yes, this guy. Right. Hey, look, we got it. We got it on. Sorry, sorry, maintenance of way, everyone. We uh, we did not protect your tunnel, and we are now going objectively too fast again. It's fine. Well, it's coming up on uh, the end of my time available to record, unfortunately, gentlemen. I've still got plenty to do to get my house ready and sold and get moving to Colorado. And I'm finishing up the last couple things, so I'm going to have to jump off. But, oh my goodness, Smokebox, this model is just outstanding. Uh, and the, the sim work is great, and it's beautiful. I mean, and as if on cue... There's another one. Look at that. <laughs> Such a gorgeous piece of work. The 39... Did we have consecutive numbers? Look at that. 3950, 3951. They're going to watch us fly off the side of the railroad as we go around the, this curve at about 60. That's fine. The, uh, the amount of work that you put into, just even the details of texturing and everything... Just outstanding. I mean, truly a gorgeous model, and I really, really appreciate the amount of time and effort you sink into these things. And that was the SD, that, the standard definition version, of course, not the engine that you're running, so you can see the difference in quality right there. So thanks so much for joining us, Justin, and as well, Smokebox. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll ship you a microphone, and then you can chip in and, and give us crap uh, over voice, too. But... What a neat engine, what a cool thing, and I'm sorry that I'm abusing it so violently, but that, that's half the fun on the channel, isn't it? That anyway. is half the fun, and uh, sometime here, when you got free time, we'll run the Rio Grande Challenger over. Sol that's right, there's a Rio Grande one, and I forgot about that. We're going to have to do that as another video, too. 
Uh, of course, because, you know, Rio Grande Challenger is the, the only thing better than the UP one, right? Huh? Wink, wink. Anyways, mm. thanks so much for watching, everyone. This train's going to fly off the tracks. Uh, make sure you click the like button. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. And click the little bell if you want to know when I'm uploading stuff. And I, as always, thank you so much to the ESD train crew, which Justin is a member. Thank you, Justin. Uh, it is a wonderful way to help support the channel. You get a little extra content, some behind the scenes stuff, more videos, and as well, fun stuff for live streams. And I promise we will be doing more live streams near in the future. I'm just being consumed with the process of selling a house and it sucks. But soon enough, we'll be back to kind of the normal thing on the channel and back at it. So again, thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you all next time.